welcome to the Spirit Sessions podcast. I'm your guide, Katie Silcox, bringing you your weekly self-love soundbite. Join us where I'll help you find your true spiritual home, where every single aspect of you is holy ground. Hi everyone, Katie here. This podcast is intended to inspire you, educate you, and most importantly, support you on your journey towards knowing who you really are, that inner self, that inner teacher. I am not a psychologist or a medical doctor and do not offer professional health or medical advice on this podcast. If you are suffering from any kind of psychological or medical issue, Please do the right thing and seek help from your qualified health professional. Hey out there, podcast land. I want to let you know about three really, really exciting things that are happening uh, with the Shakti School. Um, First and foremost, uh, we are now letting you know on the podcast, officially my new book, Glow Worthy, is available for pre-order right now. And we will include the links to order that in the bio and we're going to be talking a lot about glow worthy and what it means to be glow worthy and um spoiler alert you're already worthy you are already worthy it's just a process of uncovering the impediments that get in the way of that glow so if you love this podcast i hope you'll consider supporting us and pre-ordering glow worthy Also, level one for 2024, our doors are now officially open. And that means that early bird special is running. This year, we're doing things a little bit differently. We're actually keeping the numbers limited. So it's never too early to sign up to save your spot. If you've been thinking about this for years, this is the time. Get in and... Lastly, and I'm so excited to share this, we are going to be having Crystal Mortensen, who you will know from previous episodes of the podcast. She's my mentor and just an incredible healer woman. She has a background in neuroscience and somatics, in trauma healing, and in energy work. And we are going to be doing a new course with her. I'll be there. It's all about what energy is. What is energy? How can I connect with it? And how can I work with it for my spiritual path? So energy medicine 101 with my mentor, Crystal Mortensen. Links in the bio as well for that. We're going to keep giving you guys more information. And that course starts this August. It's an eight-week adventure with her. And let me tell you, I mean, I kid you not, I say this to everyone, I think one of the greatest karmas in my life is meeting meeting Crystal. She's been my personal therapist and guide and mentor for I think like almost five or six years now. I've been working with her weekly, if not more than weekly. And yeah, just what an opportunity to study with what what is a master teacher. So that's coming up. All these links to sign up for everything in the show notes and I'll see you in there. Hello, 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 everybody. I know every single podcast I say I'm so excited, but I really am. And and today is no different. I am here with a really special guest. I'm here with Dr. Patrick Porter, who is a neuroscientist and one of the world's leading brain experts. He has so much experience operating the self-help franchise, one of the biggest in the world. He sold over 3 million self-help products. And Patrick and I have talked before, Dr. Porter is as passionate about brain health and helping people live 
longer expanded lives with beautiful brains for as long as possible. Um, he is the founder of Positive Changes previously. It's the world's largest franchise network of lifestyle improvement centers. He's been featured everywhere. Dr. Oz, The Wall Street Journal, CNN, NBC, Discovery Channel, on and on. I could spend the entire podcast, Dr. Patrick, talking about your incredible history but I know you are a true scientist through and through. And what I think makes you super unique is that you are sort of a man after my own heart. You care about people's soul, which is what this podcast is all about. So without further ado, Dr. Patrick Porter, welcome to Spirit Sessions. Well, thank you, Katie. And I, I enjoy being back to speaking with you here in your audience. So thank you. Cool. So, I mean, I, I, I want to just start with sort of the thread that weaves, I, I say we're a place of science and heart. And I love the convergence of those two places. And through my research of over 20 years in the ancient tantric Buddhist studies and, and Hindu studies, one of the things that becomes really clear as you study it is the importance of light and sound. And so tell us a little bit about how you got interested, and we'll talk a lot about brain tap later, but like how you got interested in working with people's brains through the medium of light and sound and why that's so important. Yeah, well, I think it's really important when you talk about the Indian scriptures and things like that. I, I was just on actually uh, two hours ago with Ames Bhopal because they just renamed their neuro center, the brain tap neuro center over there. And we were talking about Veda. In the Vedas, they talk about light, sound, and vibration. And they asked me the same question. And so I brought up the Vedas uh, and I just was telling them that this is ancient traditions. We're just making it modern technology. So if you think about, um, to give an example to what I'm talking about, in the Vedas, they talk about if you have a mental illness, they would have you sit out in two hours before sunrise because that's the time on earth when the most infrared light hits the planet. Now, they didn't know that in the Veda. They didn't explain that in the Vedas. They just said, go out there and you'll get the healing light of the sun. And they're like going, well, there's no sun. But the, that's because they're basically back then, nobody knew that it was infrared. But now we have the science that shows that. So that's part of it. When they think about mantras and chanting and doing this work, this is a vibratory release of basically we know now that it's releasing our own ba basic uh, pharmacy in our brain. You know, it's making us feel blissful, joyful, our natural states. And when, when we raise our energy separately, then we come together with someone else, that energy improves because we also know in the Vedas, they talk about this as well, that we call biophotonic exchange, which means we all have light. We're all sharing that light with each other. And in that light is information. So when we're in, now we're doing this over the internet, but if we were in person, we would have even a more intimate response because our fields, even the National Institute of Health now, what I was explaining to them, I brought it up, the National Institute of Health now talks about our biosphere. So it used to be if we talked about chakras or auras and these kind of things, they think we were nuts. Like heart math did the work that showed we have these 40,000 very specialized cells in our heart called neutrino cells. So when you talk about science in the heart, they're even showing that the heart is the controlling mechanism of the whole nervous system. So we have, a, I mean, we're just on the brink of learning all of these things, but they're, now we're finding that all these ancient traditions from breathing techniques to postures, they all unlock our nervous system in a way that allows us to have a greater acceptance of the reality that we're really living in. Because we don't, we only see a very small part of it. If you look at the spectrum of light, we like have, if you put it on an infinite scale, we're not even a hair. Uh, you know, that's the that's the reality that we live in, the domain of light, sound, and vibration. So, but there's this whole other universe that we're not even aware of, but we're becoming more and more aware of it, like frequencies of love and like they do in the Sophigio frequencies and things like that, that they're finding that there's all this vibrational medicine that mm -hmm. starts first with light. But what would get me involved in is my dad was a Silva instructor. A lot of people know about the Silva method. My dad was one of the very first in the country. They called them Silver uh, Silva instructors. He was one of the top first 20. So I got a chance to basically help my dad set up seminar rooms every other weekend in lower Michigan um, during my childhood and into my high school years. And then <clears throat> later, he allowed me to start teaching with him. And then uh, when I, I got a job with light and sound research, because in the Silva method, they have a sound, they call it the Silva sound. 
And in Silva, they want to get you into alpha. And in this alpha state, they call it level. So when you go to level, you can use GSR machines and all these, because I learned through, <clears throat> I learned meditation a little bit differently. I didn't really know it was yoga or anything like that when I was learning it, you know, because the Catholic church taught us, <laughs> you know, so a, a lot of that they, they kept from us, but they didn't know they were releasing us out into the wild. Once, 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 you, once, you, once you open up consciousness, there's no stopping it. Right. So, um, but I, I met up with some people in the eighties and, and I became their researcher. And through that process, we combined light, sound, and vibration. Now, before that, you couldn't do it because there was no there was no technology to do it. It was hard to change. Uh, just to give people an example: with brain tap, we're using flickering light or called retinal flashing. But gurus did this a long time ago, and people we call it a jyoti meditation. You know, when people look at a candle, that candle is actually flickering at 10 hertz frequency. So at light and sound, we looked at what is a handle doing and what is it, like people go, I'm mesmerized by that fire. Well, when we get into alpha, the body naturally down regulates the sympathetic system, which means you get into parasympathetic, the, the thriving state. And then when you're in that thriving state, you start to heal. So, you know, a lot of uh, what's going on here was the, the sound part of it has always been around. That was easy to du duplicate, but the light part wasn't. So we used... Just like binaural beats, we use ocular neural or binaural because we're using the light to do the same thing. And with light and sound, we're actually training the brain. So, and it was all about teaching people not only to meditate, but to get rid of pain because of probably a lot of people who practice meditation in that they don't have the same headaches and have the same pains because when you downregulate that sympathetic system and you turn on alpha and theta, you're releasing more of those uh, neurotransmitters that make you feel good, you know, like GABA and acetylcholine, things like that. <clears throat> yeah, for everyone listening, I mean, essentially, BrainTap is one of the only, there are like three devices that I subscribe to. You know, I'm very much like a crunchy nature girl, but I'm obsessed with BrainTap. I, I, and I've been using it now for years. And you essentially put on these kind of spacey looking goggles and, and you put on these sort of earphones and it's this incredible experience where you, it's, so I, I, I'm a PhD school dropout. I, I started a PhD in, in Jungian psychology and the basis of that is the basis of yoga. And I think the basis of what I've, I've heard in your work too, which is we are unaware of that, which we are unaware of until we're aware of it. And there's always this like feeling of humility because the unawareness just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And so when you use something like brain tap or do meditation or stare at a candle, what we're really doing is quietening the, maybe the, the right brain and the prefrontal cortex so that we can enter into an experience of a different aspect of our consciousness where more healing actually does exist, where we can get out of these old limited egoic, we would call it patterns that seem so real. They seem like they really are us. And brain tap has really helped me um, in a way. It's like, it, it's like a guru in a way, and that it forces you in this really gentle, loving way it's hard not to get quiet when you have that amount of light coming at you. <laughs> I'm just so curious what your brain, heart, spiritual practice looks like, Dr. Porter. Like, do you, I, I'm just curious. What, what does it well, look if you, like? If you were to uh, hang with me in the morning, yeah. I, typically around 5.30, and I have a two-hour practice that I do, and um, I have an infrared sauna at, at work. We have a nice uh, enlightened sauna, but I don't, when I found at work, I don't always get a chance to get in there and warm up the whole sauna. So I bought one of the little pop-up saunas. I have that at home. And I, I first start, I, I was initiated into TM. So I do a half hour of TM inside the sauna. Just I'm without, in, without anything, just raw. Do do? Okay. Yeah, just raw doing that. And then when I do, then I, uh, that's usually 30 minutes because the timer is about 30 minutes. And then when I'm done with that, I go over to, I have an in harmony vibration uh, that you sit on. You can sit cross-legged. If you look at it online in harmony, if you put brain tap on it, you'll get a discount too, but I, I'm not here to sell that. But that's what <laughs> I, and basically it allows you to sit in your uh, pose and you don't have to be a yogi. 
and it, it has vibrations that come up through your body. So as you're sitting on it, you get this vibrational experience. And what I do with that is I usually do a gamma session and right. I do, I do another chant program, but I'm always listening to one of my, the recently, since I have the Sophigio frequencies on brain tap, I do one of those in gamma because gamma uh, actually produces uh, gamma produces GABA, which is the precursor to DMT. So I try to have my spiritual experience every morning. If I didn't have it during TM, which I usually have some pretty incredible, I studied with Yogi Bhajan for five years. So I do breath work while I'm, when, before you do TM, you're doing some breath work to really energize the system. And then you get these kind of out of body kind of practices. And I'm always asking my, you know, the spiritual universe or the the divine beings to teach me whatever I need today. And so during, and there's a little, there's a, there's a chant when I'm doing the Sophigio frequencies that I learned from the Thoth, the Emerald tablets, which is to chant uh, Zen Baru, which is supposed to charge up the cells of the body. So I'm doing that one. And I, I also <laughs> practice. Self wait, wait, I want to go back to that. I, I, I'm like, by the way, listeners, we're getting just such a beautiful download. This is a very intimate practice. So I'm so grateful. And I know everyone will benefit, but what is Emerald? What? I love Emerald. Well, the Emerald if, you, if you, if you read the book, the Emerald tablets by Hermes thought, they found it in uh, the 1920s. It will shock you. I've never even heard of that. Oh yeah. He, Hermes thought was they attributed Cheops pyramid to Cheops, but it was really built by Hermes. And uh, he writes the whole story in, in the book. And the incredible part was this book was, this tablet was found in the twenties. They talk about this time period and what's happening. It's, and what do they say? They talked about how they're gonna kill half the human population and things like that that's going on and they said that's when lightning's gonna when we're gonna conquer the skies again and they they talk about the whole thing and it's it just blew my mind when I started reading about it and but there's a uh, he talks about how the pyramid was basically uh a initiation portal so when you like when you go into the king's chair and I love pyramids so you know that that's why I read the book first was because it was about pyramids but also the carbon atom appears like a pyramid and we're made of carbon. So it's, and it has the same dimensions as the pyramid of Cheops. So, but it's just super small, right? The carbon atom is like the smallest molecule. So when we, when we think about, so what I'm doing is I'm, I'm aligning my energy and they, they say when your body is aligned, like your chakra centers, however you want to think about your energy centers, then you become like a laser you are lazing, you're bringing that energy into the, your body, but it has to come through you. So the, that's why the, old, the saying that I have, everything that happens through you happens to you. So that's why you wanna have that loving energy, that healing energy to come through you. And so while I'm doing my practice, I'm, I'm doing that, but you'll learn that there's a lot more than just that in that book, but in the morning I'm doing that. And then what I do is, the 10 minutes in uh, the most important yoga pose that I learned in India, the, the corpse pose, <laughs> you know, when, when I do that, I have a, I have a PMF of, that I use in the, the loop. I just put it on my gut and I do my 10 minutes of just zoning out, let in getting downloads, you know, whatever I'm doing. And then after that, then I go down and do my green drink. And then I come up and do, physical exercise you know oh. I, I, and if i might do yoga i might do uh, i we're now working with a balance board that is some incredible um neural connections like we're look, working on it for dementia and alzheimer's so i'm going through the whole practice so i right. can teach people so that's when i do my physical workout i work with resistance bands and and things and the the downside is i travel a lot so i can't take all that with me right so, but i can always take my my brain tap uh, because when I'm on the cushion, I'm using the brain tap, but I'm doing that my, my 10 minutes every morning. And then in the middle of the day, I always do a 20 minute session in the middle of the day. It's marked off um, <clears throat> because I, you know, just like everybody else, I have stress. I mean, I, just because I run a business that de-stresses, you know, doesn't mean I don't stress. Well, and I find that so often, and I, you know, I'm, I'm one of the teachers on your brain tap and I use brain tap and I, and I use your, your, your sessions and a lot of the other people's sessions. And what I find is that so often that the healing that you said, you know, it comes to us and through us that we need 
is what we share and what we need, we write the book about and what we need, we create a, a technology for. And, and I want everyone out there to listen. Dr. Porter is a neuroscientist. He's been on Dr. Oz. He's on every, like, I know you, you travel all over the world way more than I do or that I even could. And you have all of these practices that you are dedicated to nonetheless. And I think that that's just so important for people to hear because so often, you know, our students in Shakti school say, well, if I did all these practices, Katie, I'd be doing two hours of meditation, you know, work in the morning. And I'm like, exactly. But you, A, will have more energy and B, it's a requirement to keep the human body going, right? And so I'm just, I know also in brain tap, I've heard so much of the suggestions, the auto suggestions. And so I thought maybe we could speak about, it seems to me, and correct me if I'm wrong, there's something really important about a brain reprogramming. Oh yeah. Well, so, the average person- And how does the brain, how does the brain work? Like how yeah. do we, what is the best state for us to get positive affirmations into? Because it's not enough to just say affirmations, that's for sure. Right. Yeah, actually, in my uh, on my pre-conference workshop, I'm doing it. Dave Asprey's here in a couple of weeks. I'm going to actually be showing them why what's going on and how to supercharge those affirmations because we need to personalize them because emotion drives behavior and also physiology drives emotion, which drives behavior. So if your physiology is out, that's why we always recommend yoga or tai chi or dance. You got to get the body moving. If you're not moving your body, all these other things won't work. Uh, because of the, the problem. So the, the, the main thing about how the brain works is if we, like for instance, sitting, they now know one study just came out, 10% less oxygen to the brain if you sit for three hours. So when they say it's worse than smoking, that's worse than smoking. Wow. So our nervous system really needs to be moving. So you should have a practice. If, if you have to work by sitting down, then get up and move every once in a while, get your body going. That's important for the brain to work correctly. Uh, now, the next thing is that our brain needs, first thing in the morning too, uh, by the way, I always start my morning with uh, some niacin and some water and salt. And now the reason for niacin is that's vitamin B3. And if you want to have mental wellness, most people don't know that Bill, who wrote the big book of AA, he actually attributes most of his success to niacin. Wait, are we talking about Alcoholics Anonymous? Yes. Wow. But nobody's talking about that because it's it's so cheap. You can buy Wait, it. his success in overcoming alcohol addiction. Yes. Yeah. Because wow. it, it's not he, he didn't stop drinking alcohol because he stood up in in meetings and said I'm an alcoholic. That's actually negative. What he did was he changed his physiology and he changed his chemic chemistry because your your physiology will change your chemistry in the body. In B3 right now because of stress most people don't have enough B vitamins. And so uh, I always recommend that, uh, and now there's a product that, uh, that, I, that I found that has it in it, but I always travel with B3, just drink a little bit in water in the morning. What's and the product? Can, I don't care. We want to tell people. Yeah. So you, it, oh, it's, uh, I use Optimum Nutrition. It's called Be Awake. Mm -hmm. And it's got all the B vitamins in it. So not just B3 and it's made by Optimum Nutrition. I could send you the link so you could share sure. it with people. Yeah. Um, the, it's, for me, a lot of people will take it like when they hit the snooze button, <laughs> they and they'll take two or three of them. They'll have it by their bedstand, and then within ten minutes, it kickstarts your brain because it's uh, it's what we need really in the morning to get our brain working right. And a lot of people miss out on B vitamins just because the stress is shutting those down, and we need to really operate at a higher level. So I have a question that's super selfish. Um, so in the afternoon. That's when I get that, obviously, sometimes that slump. And so what do you take? Or, I mean, you mentioned a 20 minute practice. What do you recommend for that afternoon slump? I mean, I'm not going and getting a Starbucks, but you, you know, I'm just curious. I know our listeners would appreciate how do we, how can we optimize that level? Well, what you're going to find is you, breath, breath work is the best. I always tell people in the morning, I do the breath of fire pretty much to that's going to activate the SMR brainwave. Actually, I had two publish. But what, what's the SMR brainwave? That's the sensory motor rhythm. That's the one that as we get, uh, you know, more intelligent and better looking with age, that's the one that atrophies. <laughs> so, so we need to keep that one going, right? Okay. So, and then uh, 
that's the one also that when people say they have uh, senior moments, you know, or things like that, they really don't have senior moments. What they have is as we age that atrophies. And then if there's not enough blood flow to the hippocampus, we can't, we can't construct memories. So the brain goes, you know what, that's too much work. I'm not going to do that. The information's still there. We just don't have it. In the middle of the day, I recommend box breathing. And the reason it's more active and, um, you know, you have to think about it. And if you can start even with three or something and then work up to six, you know, for each of those positions. So for people that don't know, this is like you breathe in four, you pause four, you breathe out four, you pause four. Yeah. And you keep doing that. What will happen is it like builds energy, builds energy, builds energy. But it's also so relaxing, I find. Right. And that's really what's happening. You know, there, if anybody's ever had children or seen somebody else's children, when they get overtired, yeah, they, they actually become more hyperactive. And that's really what's happening in the middle of the afternoon, because your temperature is dropping two degrees every day at two o'clock, wherever you're at in the planet. Wow. So think in terms of the sun is our biological clock. It tells that the circadian rhythm is more than just for sleep. It tells our body what to do. Um, as another example, if you don't get to sleep before 10 o'clock, you're not making as much melatonin. More melatonin is made before 12 than there is after 12. So every hour before 12 is worth two hours after. So if you can get to sleep by 10 or 11 o'clock. That's why I go to bed at 8 30 or 9 and people are like, I mean, it's really bad for my social life, but yeah. it's so good. And I get up at 5 30 as well. I want to go back really quickly on this topic of, ser- of, of circadian. So in Ayurveda, they've been saying the same thing, right? Like vata, pitta, and kapha, these different body types, but also they are the times of the day. And so it can also vary slightly what is what rays of the sun are ideal for you according to your type. But in general, people don't even know the basics. So if we just knew the basics, but I'm curious about the two hours before, because in Ayurvedic medicine, we want to be outside as naked as possible in the light of the rising sun and the setting sun. But can you say more about the superpowers of the two hours before you mentioned it being infrared, but what does that do to the brain and the body? Well, infrared, like most of the light we use on brain tap isn't infrared because it's not. It's, no, it's, it's uh, 650 and uh, 470 nanometer light. Our light mimics the sunrises and sunsets. I took the, the healing frequencies. Yeah, that's what we're using. So in, we're, we're, we're resetting those circadian rhythms and we're doing it with earth frequencies. So uh, when the light comes up in the morning, it's gonna have more blues. At, at night, it's gonna have more greens because that opens and shuts the synapses of the brain. So when you're doing that, now what we, what we do, what we find upon awakening, when you, you don't think there's any light, but there is light. And the reason that it's so exciting is those, our cells, our mitochondria are actually communicating with light. It's called biophotonic exchange. And so that mitochondria is absorbing light all the time. Like when you walk into a room, you're literally sharing your light with the room and the light is, they're absorbing it with you. That's why when we get, we say, you don't, don't want to be around drainers. You want to be around gainers, you know, the energy vampires we want to avoid. <laughs> I've never heard the gainer drainer. That's really yeah, good. yeah. I mean, there are people that walk in the room and it just gets a little darker. You know, you, 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 you don't know. And, and they, you can tell they're, they're, they're just, they're there. They feel really good afterwards, but everybody goes, man, I don't know. I, it's like that Nickelodeon thing where they slime you. You know, there are certain people that it just feels like that when they, when they leave the room. Poor and, buddies. Yeah. And so what I started doing earlier and when I, when I learned about this in years ago is I just, there's an infinite amount of energy, but if you think there's a finite amount, they'll rob you of your energy. So just produce more energy. You can be a conduit. We are like uh, we are like capacitors. Capacitors hold a charge an electric circuit and then discharge. We all have that. So we all look for discharges, right? We all look for ways to energize and discharge. We can't always be charging all the time. We can't always be excited and we gotta have that downtime. So what, what drainers do is they just walk around all the time and they're just discharging all the, they're just, oh, it's not good enough. It's not, you know, low energy thoughts, low energy times. But every morning is an opportunity. That's why in ancient cultures, they would celebrate sunrises and sunsets. We now know with science that it actually can reset your gut biome. Just by looking at the sunrises and sunset for 21 straight days, you will change your physiology. And how long do you recommend that looking? Well, you can, 
well, there, there's only like a small window of time, maybe 15 to 20 seconds, that's actually really right. Valuable. No, I mean, and the ancients would literally get that sunset down to the second. And then I don't know if you're interested in this, but yep. the Vedas actually say that the ash from the cow dung that you use to burn at the ceremony of the rising sun and set, it can actually increase the fertility and health of the soil. Like, it's crazy. So that's like a metaphor for the microbiome of our own gut is the earth's soil. Yes. So yeah, I'm just curious if you had like a wind, like I know, you know, Dr. Huberman talks about seven minutes and I've heard others say 20 minutes. And so I'm just curious for people that yeah. really don't have two hours like you and I do, you know. I, um, I, I tell people if you can get out, even walking at that time, barefoot, uh, I just bought 80 acres here. We're going to have to have you out to see. The I farm. would love to do that. Beautiful. We're going to have a five-star biohacking camping retreat center that. Wow. Um, I'm and gonna, you're near I'm, me. Oh yeah, I'm going to put a lot. I'm going to put a lot of money into it because I want it to be like Star Wars or Star Trek meets uh, New Age. You know, it's going to be uh, because healing okay. now is it's the environment too, and we have dolphins swimming outside of our property almost every morning here in New Bern, it's, it's, they come up the, they come up the Trent uh, or the Noose River into our little creek. And, but getting out and watching that sunrise while you're earthing, mm -hmm. that's the best. Wow. Because if it only takes about 10 minutes, you just, whenever I, what I usually do is we usually just ask Siri or somebody, you know, hey, when's sunrise today? And they'll tell you the exact time in your that's area. So cool. Then get out there when it's still a little dark. If you can see, if you can actually capture that now at night it's pretty easy if you can see the green blip mm. if you've not seen the green blip then find a clear night just go out a half hour before sundown and and then when it just it, it basically when it just drops below the reason you see green is it takes longer to travel to our eyes so if you see it right you'll see that green blip if you see that green blip then you got the you got that those yeah. few seconds that you really need. In the yeah. morning, I've not really seen a, I've not really heard anybody talk about the signals, but it's basically- But I mean, you're getting it, right? Yeah. If you're out there, you're getting it. It's challenging. I live in the mountains, you know, in the Appalachia and we don't, I'm like, it's so hard to actually see the sunset. Like when I lived in Hawaii, you could really see it over the ocean, but nonetheless, you're getting those light rays no matter what. This is incredible. I really, you know, I think so often, I remember one of my mentors said when things get complicated and chaotic, the remedies are really simple and, and the light, you know, just getting the light. And yet it's something our culture does not allow for or, or encourage, um, on the brain tap end. So I'll obviously connect everyone to that, to link, to buy this, but a, I will say it's like the best around 600 bucks I've ever spent. And I use it every week, at least. If it is mimicking that initial sunrise and sunset, is it okay to do brain tap anytime or should we, or would it be better to use brain tap in the morning and the, and the sunset? Like I, I know I usually use it in the afternoon. Right. Yeah. That's, I think the afternoon is the best time huh. uh, to reset the nervous system. This is what we did with the peak performance study we did with Julia Arndt when we took the top performers at Google and Microsoft. These were the top one percenters. And when we had them take all the, the testing and we published this paper uh, because of burnout, you know, people are having burnout on the job and they don't have time, right? You're talking about people that don't have time. These are people that Microsoft and Google actually count the number of keystrokes. And so, I mean, it's crazy. They, these guys are like under the gun. That's and, so sad. Um, yeah, they were... We improved their uh, depression score by 71%. That's how sad it was. And their sleep scores by 47%, just by okay. doing it in the afternoon. How and much brain tap? Just one day, one time a day for 20 minutes. We, we improved their productivity by 19%. Their sleep scores improved 43%. So, and then we looked at it uh, 30 days afterwards and they continued that program. And they we told them that after 30 days, if they wanted the brain tap, to start using because we wanted to have a washout. They all wanted it back because they, they felt like they weren't getting their edge. That 20 minute gave them two mornings to work. Now, what we wanted to prove also was what happens to the circadian rhythm. So I wanted to find a group, a population that nobody could argue with. So I went to Western Australia. We did a study there with coal miners 
and uh, Dr. Known, who's one of Wait, our- what do you mean a population no one could argue with? Say more well, about Everybody says, I got this, I, blue light's gonna hurt my eye. Blue light does not hurt you at night. That's a, that's a lie. Good, because uh, I like to watch a little bit of stupid TV and it helps me fall asleep. <laughs> right, right. Blue light will hurt a small population, just like EMF is felt by a small group of, pop, of the population. For those people, yeah, it's very dangerous. But yeah, I mean, I use the glasses. Yeah, if you didn't get blue light during the day, let's say, or any time, like the people wearing the glasses all day long, that's not good. You're going to be depressed because totally. blue light is the that's the happy. It's it's the one that triggers the brain to to get back on schedule. So these these guys and they were all guys in the study and and but they they'd go to work in the dark. They they work in the dark, they leave in the dark. That's why no one could argue with you because yes. these people live in darkness. Yes, they have no circadian rhythm. Hmm. So we train them. It's, it's more the frequency of light than it is the color of the light. So when there's always blue light, if you can see. So at night, there's always blue light from our sun. More blue light, if you walk outside at eight or nine o'clock at night, there's a million times more light really than our screens. Wait, then why is this obsession with screens destroying our brains and our circadian rhythms and all Because of it's the frequency of the LEDs. When we're looking at this screen, the light's happening, but also our brain is trying to predict over a million different changes every so many milliseconds. You know, you, you remember the movie um, with Dustin Hoffman where he's playing the savant uh, Rain Man, Rain Man. And, and they drop the toothpicks on the ground. He says 1,273 or whatever. And they go, what do you mean? He goes, that's how many toothpicks there are. He counted them. Well, believe it or not, we're all doing that all the time. We're counting all the pixels. We're, we're noticing how they change on the screen. That's a lot of work mm -hmm. for the brain. Mm. And, you know, so I'm not saying that blue light, heavy duty blue light isn't bad for you, but there's more... It, Go outside, even at nine o'clock, a half hour before sleep, you're going to get incredible amounts of blue light because that's how we see it's we live in a blue light planet. So it's good. So what did you find with the miners? What what was what do you feel was proved? Well, the big biggest proof was in within three weeks, we had a 71 percent improvement in sleep scores by using brain tap because using, they didn't have natural light. Yes. In three times a day, we had them do the morning session because we had to re-regulate their brain. Wow. The problem is if you have a dysregulated brain, it's gonna even going to cause more trouble. If you have a brain that regulates, like if you want to become unshakable, you get up in the morning, you do something to engage that SMR training. That's why the rapid breathing and that kind of stuff to get the brain going. We need cortisol. We need neuropronephrine. We need uh, cortisol. All those things. In the we morning. need the sympathetic nervous system. Yes. Yeah. So we're waking it up. The problem is that people turn it on and they don't know how to turn it off. Mm -hmm. So then in the middle of the day, we really need a reboot. And what a reboot means, <clears throat> this is why people seek um, whatever addiction they have, you know, um, alcohol, drugs, whatever, pornography, whatever it is, that addiction is an escape. It gets them out of their brain state for a brief period of time and they get a release, whatever that release is. And then so then, but dopamine doesn't work like everyone thinks it does. Dopamine is an exciter, but when you do the thing you're excited about doing, you don't get satisfaction because that's not what dopamine does. Okay. That's why Buddha said all unhappiness stems from unfavorable comparisons. You know, so when, the, when you, so we, what we need to do, that's why learning delayed gratification is so important for our nervous system that we, some things don't have, we got to, everything happens in time and in cycles. Like when you're breathing, you can't breathe in and out at the same time. You got to do one or the other, you know? So it's, everything is a give and take. Everything is an ebb and flow. And so in the afternoon, we need a total reboot. And so when you, that's why there's a 20 minute deep theta. And that's why you probably do it in the afternoon. Theta, so you think theta is one of the, so I'm, I'm, this is a total selfish question, but I know a lot of the listeners get this. Like I want to lay around after lunch and watch something stupid, like judge Judy. Like I want my brain to be dumb and stupid and I want to be entertained. And I'm like, there has to be a better thing that could give me 
the thing Judge Judy's giving me, but not giving me. So right. if I were your client, what would you say to me to get over my Judge Judy addiction? <laughs> well, Although I don't, I don't think that's a terrible one. Yeah, that's not, that's not one of the worst addictions I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, well, we like to do, we like to watch comedy at night before we go to bed. So do I. All these things will work on neuroplasticity. They get you laughing. Laughing, okay. one of the reasons laughing love works is it rewires the brain when something's humorous or if you have to solve a problem like Judge Judy, you're yeah. using your brain to solve somebody else's problems, not yours because they're presenting their case. She's going to make a verdict. So you don't it, hate this. Know. You don't hate this for me. Oh, no, not as long as it's not all day, you know. No, 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 no. The, you know, and we need these periods. That's a help. Yeah. You know, look, what I would recommend if somebody was to tell me they were in like you're in good shape, you you know you're you're look good and 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 you look like they're physically in shape. Yeah. But if somebody is looks like they're not in shape and they're physically telling me that they're they're sluggish, I would say eat lunch, go for a walk. Mm -hmm. While you're walking, put on your headphones, listen to my SMR training because you. And we also have Kathy Smith, who's an exercise physiologist. And your SMR training is inside brain tap. Yes, it's inside okay. brain tap. What SMR does, it's going to build your balance. Your flexibility is going to reset the brain, but now you're walking and swing your arms. It's really important. That's in what will happen is if you start to do that, you're going to boost your metabolism because a lot of people, the eating should make you energized. But mm -hmm. if you feel tired after you Luggish. eat, I think there's a blood sugar problem. And you can, you can start to boost that because you have a metabolic, you have a, a time to really ignite your metabolism. We have studies that show brain tap improves metabolism by 30%. So in, in, that's because the nervous system gets back online. When you're in sympathetic drive, for those listening going, how does that work? If you're in sympathetic drive, we have something in our body called the liver. Everybody knows about it, but they don't really understand what's happening with it. So they'll tell you, Katie, I can't believe I'm not losing weight. I'm doing everything right. I'm not eating sugar but they're stressed all day long. So they're eating candy bars all day long. And I'm going to explain why, because stress is more fattening than chocolate. Virtual candy bars. Yes. So the liver houses 25 grams of sugar at any one time. It's there as a backup generator. So if a tiger jumps out or you need to flee, it pushes that all into the system. Then of course our muscles need it because we're running away from this tiger. The problem is we're sitting at home watching Judge Judy or, or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and there's no tiger to run away from. And some people do this so often, they like looking at their phones 300 times a day. Totally. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm like bought a box that yeah. you literally put your phone to be prisoner in and it's really changed my life. I mean, these are things I struggle with too. And I don't even feel like I have a phone addiction, but it's just so ubiquitous. Yeah, that's, that's right. So these this stress response, if you have stress responses all day long, our body's designed to have four or five of those a week, not four or five before okay. breakfast, you know, or, or all day. So what happens then is the liver says, you know what, I'm just going to keep pumping sugar into the system. And then the body's going to say, well, we don't need it. So we're going to have to keep producing this uh, fat storing hormone, you know, that that's going to protect us from, uh, you know, the, the pancreas will run out of uh, energy will, will it'll, basically it's an insulin drip. You know, insulin is a fat storage hormone. So the only time we need it is if we have too much sugar in our bloodstream. So it's regulating. And some people, that's when they become insulin resistant. And what that really means is they have a faucet that's left on, like in your bathroom, you know, that's dripping. They have a dripping. Now, what happens if they don't eat is now they become low blood sugar because now. It, the body thinks they're going to have this stress response, then they start working on it. So what I tell people is make sure you start eating some high fiber foods when you start changing your thinking too, because you're going to have to change your physiology based on nutrition. So I think that's a really good thing to end on. The food, like in Ayurvedic medicine, food is our first spiritual practice. And so I'm curious what your recommendations are for people to really, what are the foods that really help support this brain neuroplasticity? We're going to all buy a brain tap and use Katie's code and get a great price and all that. But like, I'm serious. I believe in this so much, but what are the foods that you've found to really support that? Yeah. If you can, it's not eating as much, like maybe that's number one. And if you can do eat in a certain window, like 10 hours, eight hours, six hours, whatever, uh, even if it's only five days a week, that's going to be really good for the brain. 
um, because it's going to teach the body to have that autophagy and you know clean out the cells and get them working better. But if you can look at whatever omega threes, you know a lot of omega threes. Eat eat an avocado every day if you're worried about your brain. I, needs fat. Yeah, I eat a half an avocado and I take a thousand milligrams of fish oil. Yes, so that's super for your brain. So the more you, and then I do greens like energy yeah. bits and things like that, and because of like spirulina, blue and green algae, they actually are high in omega threes. Huh. really high in fact that. that's where the fish get it that's where your fish are getting it so you can bypass the fish oil by doing the <laughs> I, I still like i still do some supplement like that too yeah. but also like energy bits or these other products that they've come out with i also like get off your acid which is a friend of mine dr joffrey's get friend. off your acid that's yeah. amazing title. You, you, should, you should interview Dar Dar yeah. he's really we'll good. Bring him on. Uh, he's uh but it, it's greens that you take now these greens also have protein so especially if you're vegetarian, most vegetarians do not get enough protein. But if you started doing spirulina and blue and green algae, you're going to get the protein you need. So I do that every day. That's what, what I do before I do my workout. Because also these algaes in the spirulina is light activated. Exactly. So, so now when you get out in the sun, you're, you're basically giving your mitochondria, the energy system of the body, food that is energized. And it's energized by light, like from the sun, or you can do, you know, I do it before I do my light therapy in the morning. I also have a light bed, you know, that has 12,000 LEDs. So I can get into it and charge my body. And I'll do, I'll do some, I also do like methylene blue or Prexin blue or something like that to, at times to, especially if I'm going to be traveling to just boost my immune system. Uh, but food wise, you want to do all low, low glycemic roots and vegetables. If you, if you need a real recommendation, look at if you're a meat eater, paleo kind of diet, if you're not, a bit, a keto is super important. We need to eat for our brain. Uh, water is so important. Uh, even though uh, there's been some real negative press about um, things like uh, uh, stevia, the, uh, I don't think that's true. They just threw stevia in with all the other bad things. Stevia is, is known to balance out your blood sugar. If you're somebody that, that when they start to do these things, starts to have those blood sugar swings, just put three or four drops of stevia in your water and you'll still get the benefit of the water, but it'll be balanced out your blood sugar. It will start to reset that uh, insulin drip. And then, uh, and it's very inexpensive. You can buy a whole bottle for $6, you know, at a, at a health food. So I, I'm, I know we're getting to the end, but I also have a question about because in Ayurvedic medicine, what we call ama, right? Like this whole, this word is sort of a catch all for any type of toxin buildup in the body, but it's characterized the way I think you and I as moderners would call mold or fungal biofilms are sort of the new words for this. And one of the characteristics of mold is that it actually is, it's dark, right? It sucks out the light. Do you have, does brain tap help people clear what we would call ama or fungal mold biofilm? I'm curious because that connection in Ayurveda to mold being the absence of light, they actually call it the place where dogs pee, <laughs> like the dark yes. place where dogs pee. So I'm curious because mold, I think is one of the mold and fungal and biofilm overgrowth is one of these things where people can be eating paleo. They can be doing all the breath work. I've gone through this too, taking all the supplements and they don't get better because they have a mycotoxin infestation. Oh yeah. We, we see this all the time. Uh, we did this because of my uh, involvement with quantum university in Hawaii, where I'm the mm -hmm. Dean of brain-based medicine. I get to consult with PhD students doing studies. And we okay. had, we had one of the PhD candidates do a study on mold and brain tap and how it worked. And oh, we had a I, can we get a copy of that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. The uh, it's uh, and the she talks about you know using the brain tap three times a day during the study. Those people that did that got a significant improvement over their mold clearing. We always tell people there's three reasons your brain isn't functioning right, but this could be for any part of the body. It's either your thoughts are out of alignment, like you're not in tune with your, in this case, your divine source, you're not in, or your innate intelligence, however you want to think about that. Number two, uh, it's, it's either thoughts, traumas, something happened, you had a head injury, some damage that's happening, or, and I would say mold is one of those. And then toxins falls into that category too. So if you have toxins, you know, they, there's a, there was a study done at Harvard that I'm 
that I used to have, but I need to find that again because I seem to be referencing it a lot lately, but they kept cells from a chicken heart alive for 35 years. And what they did was they detoxed it. They made sure it had no toxins. They made sure that it had nutrients and they made sure it had proper light. They said they could have kept these cells alive forever. Yeah, chicken doesn't live 35 years. <laughs> yes. So what it showed was our cells are not designed to die. But if any of those three things are out of alignment, you're not getting the right light, you're not getting, you're not detoxifying and you're not getting the nutrients, the cells have no choice but to die. And the most underprescribed nutrient on earth today is light. And, you know, William Cousins said that, but it's it's really true. People aren't getting enough light. They stay in their houses, they stay in their cars. We're designed to be outside if the sun's out. That's why people have seasonal affective disorder that live in these areas that don't have enough sunlight, but people are doing this to themselves by staying inside the house. So sometimes the most uh, potent medicine for a body is free. You know, get out, ground, get out in sunlight, get some fresh air, you know, forest bathe, you know, these kind of things. These are all good for the brain too. I mean, it, the, brain, the brain controls it. It's the central control system. And so anything you do that's good for the rest of your body is going to be good for your brain. In yoga, we, what we do, we call Leia yoga, you know, union of the mind. But there's, there's um, you know, the yogis, when in India, they actually prescribe, medical doctors will prescribe yogic poses to help people with most of their problems. And they will tell you that yoga was designed to get people to meditate. So what most people do, unfortunately, in America is they do the yoga thinking it's for physical fitness, and then they jump up and they don't do their vasana, they don't do the corpse pose. The, that's when you build the neuroplasticity. So don't rip yourself off, even if it's only five minutes, just lay there for five minutes, let the brain do the work because you just did all the postures. Those postures are really working the nervous system, working the brain, and you're going to find significant improvement in cognition you know, those yogic skills that people have, intuition, you know, foresight, those are all natural to us. But the problem is if you're under stress, those aren't important They're because you're dealing with what's happening right now. Dr. Porter, I just feel like you're such a resource and I I'm just want to say thank you on behalf of all humanity for the work you're doing in the world and you've touched my life. And I just think that I can imagine this just serving so many communities, veterans, kids, stressed out moms, dads. I mean, this is just such a, uh, I know a life, life's labor of love and that really comes through. So thank you so much. Any, any closing last words? If there was one thing that you could put up on a billboard that you want people to know today, what would it be? I think number one, wake up. You're far greater than you've been led to believe far more capable than mom, dad, brothers, sisters, preachers, teachers have told you about. Just unleash the real you and don't be bashful. You know, you weren't put here to play small. You know, figure out what your superpower is and go after it. Beautiful. Thank you so much for being on the show. Guys, we're going to provide all the links to BrainTap and Dr. Porter's work and some of these studies and books and products he mentioned. And I, I got so much from this. So thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Oh, amazing. I, I, I mean, just so amazed by you every time I talk to you, Dr. Porter. Thank you. Thank you. A big special thanks to Kevin Carlisle of Goodbye Gemini, who wrote this beautiful podcast music, and to DJ Juan Pablo Jimenez in southern Spain for mixing it and making it matter.